before I discuss the, uh, the incident, I'm going to summarize between what the different kutub have mentioned. But I do want to mention, first and foremost, that this part of history is established by the Qur'an itself. Because if you read Surah Fil, you will find what happened with the Ashab al-Fil, yani the people that came with the elephants. So there is no doubt as Muslims to the authenticity of what happened because it's in the Qur'an itself. Having said that, you also have many marfu' ahadith, yani where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us about aspects of what happened during this time. We have many mawquf ahadith, yani from the Sahaba radiyanhum that explained, including some that we'll, that we'll talk about inshallah, like for example, Aisha radiyanha that said she saw some of the people from that army, and then we'll talk about when that comes. And Asma radiyallahu anha, who actually had a collection of that which was sent to destroy them. So we have many authentic narrations. But even if we look at Western historians, in their Orientalist mindsets, they also admit that there was a king named Abraha, and they talk about the names and Najashi and the time periods, and they match up as well. Regarding his attacking of the Kaaba, we'll talk about history uh, from a Western perspective, and obviously from an Islamic perspective about that as well. Abraha, as we know from the authentic historic documentation, he took 13 elephants, the strongest, the super tank, the super weapon, the secret, uh, you could say of the time, being Mahmud, uh, the very, very strong, big elephant that led the pack. On his way from Yemen, now he's starting off from Yemen, but he doesn't know how to get to Mecca. And nowadays, when you go to Mecca, where do you go? You, start, you find the nice freeways, you see the big signs, you know, see the big gates, you got GPSs. But they didn't have any of this. And this is all desert. So he didn't have. So what he did is he would start out and he would wait for the Arab tribes. And the Arab tribes, they realized that he was going to go destroy the Kaaba. And even though they were mushrikeen at the time, but from the time of Ibrahim السلام, and Ismail السلام, they had ta'zim, they, they had a respect and honor they used to give to Baytullah. So all the Arab tribes tried to stop Abraha, they tried to fight him. And as we know historically, none of them succeeded. Abraha defeated them one after the other. And he would take from them prisoners and he would use those prisoners as guides to try to get to which way the, yani the Kaaba is, which is in Mecca. One of them that is mentioned in the Kutub of Tariq, like Ibn Kathir and Adhabi and others have mentioned, is Dhu Nafr. Uh, and he was from the Ashraf of Ahlul Yemen, from the people of Yemen, who was very honored. And him and his tribe, they fought and they were defeated and he was taken as a prisoner. They continued to fight until they got to a tribe that they defeated with a, with a man named Nufail ibn Habib. Nufail ibn Habib, and he is mentioned in many of the history books, authentic narrations, uh, remember that name, and he will come up again. Nufail ibn Habib was taken as a prisoner. He was about to be executed. He told the king, what does it benefit you to execute me? So Abraha said, we will take you, but on the shart, on the condition that you show us the way. So Nufail, as a prisoner of war, showed them the way as well. Until they reached Ta'if, the city of Ta'if. And in Ta'if, the Thaqif, Qabila, they came out, but they, instead of fighting Abraha, as the other Qabail, uh, other tribes had done, they said, we are not here to fight you. Thaqif, they said, we will not fight you. Why? Because you're going to destroy Al Kaaba, Baytullah, that's okay. Just don't mess with our Baba, or our Peer, our Lat, our Saint, our Idol. Just don't mess with Lat. Now, Abraha, he had nothing to do with Lat. He wanted to destroy the Kaaba so the people would stop making Hajj to Mecca and they would come to Yemen. So he told them, You keep your Idol, no problem. And this is very interesting. Uh, Abraha here is at this time. A cl and he claims to be following the religion of Isa ibn Mari, right? Even though we know the Christians at this time had already corrupted the religion. But he's not worried about them being idol worshippers. He's not worried about them making shirk. He's not worried about them being another religion. All he's worried about is his political goal, right? The Muslim, we worry about Tawheed. 
Yani we worry about the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that has the haq to be worshipped. We worry about eradicating, I mean, I mean Muslims, like, <laughs> not everybody is the title, but a Muslim, right? We worry about, we want shirk to finish in the world, right? But many Muslims, because uh, yani the weakness of Iman, they're not worried about shirk anymore. And they see shirk, they're like, ah, so what's wrong with that? It's okay, they see somebody, he's gay, so what? He's this, so what? What does that bother me? Where's my political alliance? No, 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 this is not the way of the Muslim. The way of the Muslim is not worried about political alliances, we are worried about establishing the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the ard. So here we see Abraha, he tells him, keep your idol, no problem. But now he's a ta'if, he says, I need to get to Mecca. The Thaqif Qabila, they gave him a guide. Yani, and, and the one who came out, according to Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Hisham and all of them, is uh, Mas'ud. He was one of the Thaqafi, one of the leaders of the Thaqif tribe. And subhanAllah, if you know Mustalal Hadith and Ilm al-Rijal, you will know that Urwa Ibn Mas'ud al Thaqafi is a great Sahabi. So this Mas'ud al Thaqafi, the one who went, and betrayed Mecca, betrayed Baytullah, subhanAllah, his son later will become a great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Mas'ud ibn Mu'tib uh, al-Thaqafi, he said, we will give you Abu Rughal. Some of the kutub of tarikh have him as Abu Rughal. But khair, Abu Rughal was a famous traitor amongst the Arab. And yani even uh, there's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Sunnah Abi Dawood where he said they should be rajam like, like the people should stone like the stoning the Arab do to the grave of Abu Riqal. And where does that come from? A tradition developed where he died that the Arab when they would go by they would throw stones and rocks at his grave to show their disrespect towards him because he betrayed the Arab and betrayed the Baytullah and this is something interesting to remember in history. Uh, one of the great uh, kings and conquerors of the Muslims, later, later, much later on, you have Ahmed Shah Abdali and you have Mahmoud al Ghaznavi and these people who conquered India. And when they conquered India, they took a lot of gold and statues and things, and every time they were offered to sell them. I mean, the Hindus would say, sell them to us. And Alhamdulillah, they didn't. They broke them, but they didn't sell them. Because they said, we don't want to be remembered in history as the sellers of idols. We want to be remembered as those that broke the idol. Abu Rughal at that time must have thought that I have honored myself. You know, like, like I'm not going to be killed. I'm not going to be captured. I am the guide to the greatest army the Arabian Peninsula has ever seen. Elephants behind him. Abraha behind him. 60,000 force behind him. He must have thought that. But subhanAllah, when you sell out, when you betray, what happens in the end? You become disgraced. You think, I'm going to go and help out with translations or whatever, I'm going to be a hero, but what's going to happen later? Is how will you be remembered in history when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the Nusra for the believers? So here, even though the people of Mecca are mushrikeen at this time, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need anybody. See, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of anybody. Abu Rughal, he was the guide, he continued to guide Abraha to Mecca. And we find him in uh, Sahih Ahadith being mentioned, as I mentioned from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He got to an area called Al-Mughammas, which is in current day uh, Mina. And when you go for Mina, Al-Mughammas is actually there. And this is where he died, and this is where his grave was made. And the Arab would then go and stone his grave. But now, Mina, you're very close to Mecca. So they knew how to get to Mecca from there.